Hello everyone and welcome back to the Human Design Q&A series where in each video I'll be answering your human design related questions. But before we get into today's Q&A, just as a quick reminder, if you want a chance to have your questions answered by me, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram at Crystal Alferrero and just stay tuned for monthly announcements either on my feed or in my stories where I give you a chance to submit your questions. And with that said, if you're new here, hi, my name is Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design teacher and coach and also founder of the Human Design Academy. And I help people like yourselves discover their unique energetic blueprint through the human design system. So in today's video, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do more of a general Q&A and answer five questions that I received from you all in my Instagram community. We're not just going to focus on one question. So let's just dive right in. So my first question is from La Vida Magica. And her question is, what are your top human design book recommendations? So the way that I'm going to answer this is because I have a lot of human design book recommendations, but I wanted to answer this question based on what I think would be best for beginners and for coaches, and then just one of my other favorite books. So let me show you. So the first book that I'm gonna recommend is the traditional, of course, definitive book of human design. This is one of the books that I recommend to all of my students. The only caveat here is that sometimes this book can be a little heavy, especially when it's for people that are completely new to human design. I mean, the language is a bit more on the abstract side. So I do have two other recommendations that I would highly recommend. And these are the two that are my favorite in terms of if you're like new to human design and you just want like a quick and I guess more digestible way to absorb the information, especially if you're into kind of more my style of teaching, then you're definitely gonna like these two. So the first one is Understanding Human Design from Karen Curry. Well, Karen Curry Parker now, but um, yeah, this is another, great book. The next one is Human Design from Chetan Parkin. So Chetan Parkin is my personal mentor. I absolutely love his work. That's why I chose to work under him as well and train under him. So honestly, like this is the best book. I really, really resonate with his style, with his delivery. It's a very empowering approach to human design. So I think you will absolutely love this too. Next, if you're a coach or you wanna learn how to use human design in a more coaching context, I would definitely recommend the work of Robin Wynn. Um, so these are the two books. Uh, Robin Wynn is a, I guess you could say a former student of Karen Curry Parker, but she has incredible books on how to use human design in applied in a more practical sense. So this is the first one. This is called Understanding Your Clients Through Human Design. Um, and it goes through basically like all the types, you know, it goes over the different communication styles of each type, how to work with the different types, what you want to maybe highlight when you're working with these types, you know, what challenges they might face as well. So I really like the way that she delivers it because it's in a very practical sense. And then the next one is Understanding the centers. And what I really like about this book is that it not just goes over each of the centers, but it really also dives into different practical techniques that you can use to help them embody the highest expression of each of the centers. So this is another great book, especially if you're a coach. Lastly, one of my favorite books, especially if you're someone that is, I guess like more versed in human design already, or if you've already kind of learned the basics, but I really like this book called Human Design Revealed. It's from Zen Human Design, and it's based off of the original revelation or the original transition by the voice to Ra before he was a part of Jovian Archive and IHD and like that whole organization was created, but it gives you a different perspective into human design and really goes into the mechanics of it as well. It goes into how each of the ancient wisdoms were synthesized to create the system. It goes into a lot more depth in terms of that um, versus like the definitive book of human design. If you're someone that has already learned the basics, like you're gonna want to at least read this book and I'll put the link in the description down for you below. What I also really love about this book is that it goes 
more in depth into each of the planets and what the effect is if that planet is an activation in a defined center versus an undefined center or a defined channel. It gives you a lot more in terms of the synthesis of how you might want to interpret the different gates and interpret the information, which is really awesome. One of the things that I really used it for was to learn again, like how the ancient systems were synthesized to create human design. It's how I started learning more about the I Ching and that's one of my future goals of mine to like kind of deepen my studies of the I Ching as well, but it is a lot of information. So that's, that's like a long-term thing, right? And yeah, like it just, honestly, it is a really great book. It goes into conditioning, neutrinos, all the centers, gates, channels, and a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're a human design nerd, like I am, I think you will really enjoy this book. And so yeah, those are my top human design book recommendations. I have so many more, but those are the ones that I just wanted to highlight for today. And the next question we have is from thisishome.hc and their question is, how exactly are aspects of your human design determined in a reading? Is it behavioral analysis? And this is a really great question. I'm glad you asked. So unlike the MBTI or the Enneagram, so traditional personality tests, which are an, a self-assessment of behavior, so I guess you can consider that behavioral analysis, human design is not one of those systems. It is something that is a synthesis of ancient wisdoms that gives us insight into our energetic imprint, which is correlated to the genetic code. And it gives you insight into the different behavioral patterns that we have, but it's solely based on, again, like your birth information, right? It's not a self assessment or test. And so one of the benefits of that is that it is completely objective. It's not something that we assess ourselves because there can be that margin of error when we're assessing ourselves, but there are parts of us that, you know, it really depends on your level of self-awareness and your conditioning and what human design really does. It can give you insight into just the other behavioral patterns that maybe you're not aware of. It can really illuminate parts of yourself that you're not aware of either. And it really helps you identify and gives you insight into who you are at your core, you know, beyond any layers of conditioning and who you came here to be. And in my how to read a chart part one video, I actually go more in depth into how the human design chart is actually calculated. And it's very similar to calculating your astrological natal chart. So in astrology, the sky is divided into 12 zodiac signs, which represent different behavioral archetypes. And depending on where the specific planetary bodies are at the time of your birth, this is essentially what activates those specific archetypal traits or behaviors or energies that give you insight into the essence of who you are and who you came here to be. Similarly, in human design, the sky is divided into the 64 hexagrams of the Chinese I Ching, which also represent the 64 archetypes of all human behavior. And this has been directly correlated to the 64 codons of the human genetic code as well. And actually our DNA is now theorized to be our energetic code and human design is what helps us bridge that gap. And anyways, depending on where the celestial bodies are positioned at the time of your birth and also 88 days prior or 88 degrees of solar arc prior, this is what determines what's defined and consistent in your chart. And this is what determines your human design chart and essentially your energetic profile. And one of the benefits to a system like human design versus something that is more traditional like the MBTI and the Enneagram is that human design is very objective. We're not the ones that are self-assessing. And so it really does give you insight into the core of who you are beyond any layers of conditioning, right? A lot of the times when we assess ourselves, that's based on a snapshot of who you are and how you act at a certain point in time. And this of course fluctuates and changes, but with human design, it really gets down to the core and what's most natural for you, right? And then also with the personality tests, a lot of the times this is, you know, it gives you insight into how you are conditioned to be as well. Whereas human design really differentiates the two. It's like, yes, we can be one way, but what is the most natural for us? What's the most authentic for us? And of course, take everything with a grain of salt. As you approach human design information, this is not something that is telling you who you need to be, what you need to do. It really is a system to help you guide you back to yourselves. It gives you a framework to 
help you understand yourself. And it's meant to be empowering and an illuminate really your highest potential of, of who you can be and what you can experience. And with that said, human design is of course an experiment. So even as you come across this human design information, really take the time to reflect on it and come to your own conclusions, test out the tools that you're given and that's where you're really gonna see whether something is true for you or not. All right, so my next question is from my lovely friend Sabrina who asks me if I do human design readings in Spanish. And I've actually been asked this question so many times because I do live in Spain, I speak Spanish at home, uh, my husband's Spanish, my daughter is like trilingual in Spanish and Catalan, and yeah, you would think that I would offer services in Spanish, but yeah, I'm working on it. And yeah, anyways, I wanted to answer this question and try to challenge myself to speak Spanish in front of the camera because one of my goals is to kind of expand who I can impact. And if I can communicate and teach human design in another language, then my God, like I will be so happy. So ugh, are you with me? Like <laughs> I'm actually really nervous. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna answer this question for all of my Spanish speakers. Entonces, Sabrina, de momento no, no hago lecturas oficialmente en español, la parte de hacer lecturas for fun con mi marido, con mi suegra, con mis amigos, porque aún me siento que me falte el vocabulario para hacer las lecturas con facilidad de nivel que pueda comunicarme de manera más fluido y natural, como lo transmito y lo digo en inglés con mis clientes. Y honestamente, para mí, aprender diseño humano es como aprender otro idioma. Hay muchísimas palabras y términos, así que en el futuro sería una meta mía. Además, hacer los cursos, los vídeos, en español, pero quiero más tiempo para desarrollar la confianza que tengo para comunicar algo bastante técnico en español. Y yo sinceramente doy muchísimo respeto a los que pueden trabajar en otro idioma que no sea su lengua materna y aún no he llegado a hacerlo. Bueno, entonces a lo mejor en el año 2023 lo haré. So the next question is from one of my lovely students, Elle, who asks for tips for success in love. So she is a 5-1 pure generator. Her partner is a 3-5 emotional projector. And I'm sorry if I'm assuming that this is you and your partner, Elle. It could be, you know, an another random question. Um, and then their connection formula is 9-0. First of all, there is just so much magic in the generator and projector union in that relationship. And it's really one of my favorites. <laughs> I tend to work with a lot of generators in, in my work. They're the ones that push me forward as a projector. Um, so I'm gonna talk about this in the context of love because that's what you asked for. <laughs> And so on one hand, you have that insightful projector that is there to like vision, to guide, right? And then on the other hand, you have that magnetic generator with that abundant energy to really support the relationship and build that vision into reality. So for specific tips in terms of success for love, one of the things that's really important for the generator partner is to understand your projector partner's increased importance for rest as something that's essential, that's essential for their well being, for their happiness, in order to feel, you know, productive and fulfilled, and to not see them as lazy. Another thing that's really important is to, you know, make the effort to recognize your projector partner for their insights, for their contributions, because a lot of projectors do struggle to feel seen and to feel heard. So getting that recognition can be a very, very loving and, and just feel good thing. Like it really does feel nice for projectors to be recognized, right? Another thing that is important, and I think this is more for, for the generator, like for you as a generator, you know, to be supportive, of course, but then at the same time, learning to set those boundaries or learning to compromise in a partnership when something is important for both of you and you wanna have that shared vision and that shared alignment when something is off, right? So again, setting the boundaries for when you need to say no to something so that you don't feel like you're being taken advantage of and you don't build up any resentment for doing things that are not in alignment to you. The next thing is to be 
patient and understanding with your partner's potential to jump into things and that need to make mistakes because they are, I believe it was a three, five. So that line three, but also do your best to guide your projector to also taking more time before maybe jumping into, into things because they have that emotional authority, right? It's kind of like that, that playing around, giving them space to make mistakes, but then also if you can, not forcing them to take more time, but like encouraging them, helping them see the benefits of taking more time as well. And lastly for you all, um, to cultivate awareness to how your partner is affecting you emotionally because you're a peer generator, you don't have that emotional center defined. And it's really important for the person with the undefined emotional center in the relationship to understand this, to have ways and techniques that you can go to to protect yourself and not identify with what you're picking up from your partner to help you, again, like, I guess discharge, I don't like that word. I don't know if that's the right word for this, but like to discharge the emotional energy that you're taking on that might not be yours and giving yourself that permission to get that physical space when you need it. Now for the projector partner, what is important? So the first thing kind of going back to appreciation, but making the effort to show your generator partner how much you appreciate their contribution to the partnership and share gratitude for the things that they do, you know, no matter how small they do have a lot of energy. You know, sometimes it can almost become normalized that this person has that role and this person does that stuff, but it still requires that level of appreciation. Um, I think we sometimes forget when it's something that happens so naturally. So not forgetting to share that appreciation for the simple things that your generator partner is doing and contributing to the relationship. Another thing is to respect and consider your generator's response if it's not in alignment to your direction. And again, just having that open communication to ensure that both sides are equally fulfilled. So even though like, yes, the projector might have this certain vision around things, I think it's still important for both of your visions to be kind of on the same track or on the same path. And if it's not like having that communication to see how you can make it work, um, even if it's different from what you originally had thought. The next thing is that because you're a three, five, you're someone that might tend to jump into things more, you know, a three, five with that emotional authority. So being in a relationship with someone who is a five, one sacral generator, it's important to be patient and understanding with your partner's needs to investigate and to have a solid understanding of things before jumping into these big decisions. So that could even possibly help you with jumping into things too quickly as well. And so the next thing I wanted to talk about, this is more so to do with both of you in the relationship and the partnership. So you're both line fives. So you both have line five in your profile. So it becomes really important to be conscious of the projections that you might have on one another. Be open and honest with whether you can really help or meet a certain projection, or if you need to say no and say that it's not something that you can help with, or if you need to refer them to someone else to get help. And just really making sure that you're, you know, not trying to be someone that you're not. You're not trying to meet their expectation around something if it's not in alignment because sometimes when we try to meet these expectations we and it's not in alignment it just feels draining it feels exhausting right and it's not sustainable in the long run a lot of relationships can end up failing because both have these masks on and both try to meet these certain expectations that they're not so it becomes really really important to not have that mask in the first place and not try to meet expectations and be a certain type of person that your partner thinks you are but you're really not right so it's okay let's let's say for example if it is something that is comfortable for you like i don't know just as an example like let's say one person is a very very sexual person and they have this projection that the other person is too and of course like if that is an alignment to you go ahead and do it but if not and if there's or like you know if there's something that maybe you you know maybe you want to be that type of person but just being honest from the get-go and you know allowing them to give you that space to explore to be patient with you and ultimately when we're honest with each other from the beginning that's where we avoid that resistance from having those masks on in the first place the last comment I wanted to make was that your connection formula is nine zero, which means that together you have all nine centers defined. Essentially, you complete each other in many ways. And what that means is basically that you don't need anyone else. You're kind of your own independent group. 
union. You don't seek other people. You don't need other people. But that said, in order to still nurture your relationships outside of your relationship, consider again, like carving out the space and time, like with intention for the people that matter most, uh, whether that is like friends, family, children, anything like that. And just making sure that you're still conscious of the other relationships that do matter for you and that are there to support you and that fulfill you ultimately. Okay, so the last question we have for this video is from my lovely student, Marian, who asks how to eat for projectors. And, you know, in general, because we don't have a defined sacral center and therefore we're not constantly generating and creating this life force energy, it's said that we don't need as much food in order to thrive, in order to survive, right? Um, we don't need as much food as someone that is a sacral being that needs the fuel to create the fire, right? It's also said that projectors have more sensitive digestive systems and it's because of having that open and undefined sacral center. And yeah, so... <laughs> We basically have more sensitive digestive systems and it's important for us to, you know, eat whole foods, eat easily digestible foods that can be like bananas, rice, things that aren't too rough on your system. And yeah, again, everything that I'm saying, take this advice with a grain of salt. I want you to experiment with it. I want you to consult your doctors because I am not a nutritionist. I am not a registered nutritionist. So, I mean, eating whole foods, I don't think that's gonna kill you. But again, like when it comes to experimenting with human design, when it comes to diet, health, and that type of stuff, I still want you to use your best judgment and I want you to seek professional advice if it's something that you're not really sure about, right? Another thing that's really cool that I think you're going to want to observe is how the sacral energy that comes from like other generators, like other sacral beings affects projectors when they're together. It's also like, and I, I find this true as well. Like I've seen this in myself that when I'm in a group or when I'm, you know, in a restaurant or I'm like buzzing with energy and I'm picking up on that generator energy, that sacral energy, I have a tendency to overeat and I'm like more hungry than I normally would be when I'm sitting on my couch at home. Not to say that I don't have my like, you know, once in a while binges on my couch, but just saying that normally, if you're not like conscious of it, you, there could be that tendency to overeat when you're with other people versus like when you're alone, because when you're alone, you don't have that consistent sacral energy burning up in you. You don't need that extra energy. And so you might want to experiment with also eating alone and seeing how that might affect you. Now that's all for today's Q and A video. If you found this video helpful, I would be so grateful if you could show me some love, hit that like button and share this video with anyone that you think might find this helpful. Also, if you're interested in more Q and A or you wanna learn more about the human design system, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Crystal Alferrero to learn more. So with that said, have an amazing day or evening wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.